I want to talk about GMAT preparation today, particularly those that are thinking of going and getting a doctorate of some sort, but this is really applicable to anybody that is planning for a going into becoming an, an MBA, whatever, right? If you are thinking of going into graduate school, particularly within the business realm, um, this is going to be helpful for you. So how do you actually prepare for any of these tests? So I should, <laughs> I'm going to tell you. So I'm actually a professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship. I'm Professor Dave Maslach. So um, don't do what I did. Um, this was kind of silly on my part. What I did is I took two weeks off of work and I bought one of those Kaplan or Princeton books and then I just studied for eight hours a day for two weeks and then I took my GMAT. Now the reason why I did this is I didn't have any money at the time and I also thought that I was smart enough to take these tests without any outside help. Right? And I was like, oh, I'm going to do this and I can sort of cram to get this thing done and then um, what I'll do is I'll do really well. And so I ended up doing that and my score was actually a 630, <laughs> which, you know, it's a decent score considering that I barely studied for it compared to what everybody else did. But I, what I did is I just studied like eight hours a day in the library for two weeks. And that's how I actually did mine and then wrote the test and, and before I was actually doing the test, I was getting like, you know, 600s or whatever. And then I actually wrote the test and I got a 630. I was like, yeah, <laughs> awesome, I'll take it. Um, so anyways, it allowed me to get into a good school regardless because I my background was in engineering. So I still did fairly well in terms of my placement. Um, I went to the Ivy Business School. It was my top pick because I'm Canadian and it made sense for me. But um, you know, what I wish I would have done, and I think that this is, the, the reason why I'm gonna suggest this, and it's gonna seem weird, is that the, uh, the institution, the sort of school market, is pretty global, right? And so you should have your mind open, particularly if you wanna come back to the place that you want to live in. So let's say, so for me, you know, if I wanted to come back to Canada, um, it's far easier for me to actually do my PhD outside in the United States. I didn't know that at the time, I was kind of dumb. Um, you know, if I would have went to like a Stanford or something like that and come back, far easier for me to get back in and do that. And the reason is, is they're just looking for intellectual diversity. And so they want people from different backgrounds. But there's also this sort of weird prestige thing that happens. There is a pecking order that happens within the university system. And the higher you sort of start, the easier it is to get your first position in, in a place where you want to go to. So, so given that, what I would recommend for you to do is actually devote a significant amount of resources to this damn test. Now, I didn't realize it at the time, but everything is dictated by this damn test because it's based on you know more of a, the way that, I know that this is gonna sound bad, but this is the way that the sort of American system actually works, is that everything has standardized tests. I didn't know that at the time. Uh, I didn't realize how influential it actually is, but it is. Right, so everything is about these damn standardized tests. So if you're outside of the country, um, outside of the United States, make sure that you are paying attention to this. So I, if I was to do this again, um, and I know I didn't have any money, but I would dedicate probably five to $10,000 just thinking about how I'm actually gonna take this test. And so what I would do is take those, you know, the, the the, the, the courses and all that kind of stuff. I had a friend that actually did it at the same time as me, my roommate, um, he did it at the same time as me, he did the courses. I think he did it like six months earlier or whatnot. He did the courses and he did really well on it. So they actually do make a difference. I think they bump you up from, um, you know, basically, you know, where I was to into the 700s just by following these things. Now, you know, I'm not gonna tell you how to study all these kind of things, but you need to dedicate a significant amount of time to it. So far more than three weeks, that was kind of dumb on my part, but you know, I, I got through. Um, 
but maybe study six months and know that this is your full-time job at the end of it. So this is why do I say this is because I want you to actually do well and get into a PhD position that will allow you to excel in the market, in the academic market, in the long run. Now, it doesn't necessarily matter what place you do your PhD at, you can do well everywhere, but there is an order that happens and it's easier to start at the top and to work downwards in terms of your position. So you go to the very best school that you can go to and then go to different places after that. Based on that, it's harder to come up and go from, you know, a low, well, quote unquote, lower rank school. It's silly, I know, and the whole thing is silly, trust me. Um, and to go to other places, and there's a whole bunch of reasons for this. There's, you know, the, the resources that you get, the access to people that are doing, you know, uh, maybe you'll get access to an editor at, at a certain journal if you go to, you know, Stanford or whatever, right? And, and they just have more opportunities that allows you to get research publications much more easier and allows you to get that job that you so vitally need, right? So spend that time up front. It's far easier up front to do that than it is to actually go and work your way backwards. It's gonna be far harder to actually do that. So that's the first thing is spend that time actually doing that spend resources so I would allocate um, you know five to ten thousand dollars and think about how I can waste five ten to ten thousand dollars of my money and I'm gonna say it's waste because it's gonna feel like that it's gonna hurt so five to ten thousand dollars on studying so take several courses if you need to um, you know redo the test maybe one or two times don't just do it once um, you know really start thinking about how you could do this and do a rigorous job. Now, that's the first part. And the second part I want you to sort of realize is don't feel guilty if you don't do well on it, right? Like that's the key thing with this career is you have to let things go when you fail and we're, you're all gonna fail, right? So they have these stupid standards for everything, right? Like everything has all these kind of silly standards and you fail at them, right? Like I fail at things all the time. I'm processing my own failure all the time. I always feel like I'm doing terrible um, and I'm processing this stuff all the time. So they have these ridiculous high standards and often many people can't do those high standards. They can't get in and so you feel like a failure. You're processing like I feel awful, right? And I'm processing that I am terrible. And, and eventually you're gonna reach a point in your career where this is gonna happen, unless you're the fortunate few. Remember, there is a fortunate few that sort of cruise along, they get the right opportunities, everything works out, all that kind of stuff, right? Like it, it, it works out perfectly for them. That does happen. And so those people is not talking to those people. But for the people like you mean, like normal people, um, you're gonna experience a great deal of failure in the career. So what you do is, yeah, okay, so you take your test and you bomb it, right? You take that GMAT or GRE or whatever it is that you're taking and you bomb it. You get back up and you get going and you do it again and you do it again and you do it again and you just keep doing that and, and you keep having that unbelievable amount of determination to keep going. And that's the entire career. So the reason why I want you to think like this is that imagine the career as any research career is, it's full of gatekeepers. The whole thing is a gatekeeping kind of career. It's, I'm not using this in a bad way, but you know, this is actually academic sort of um, research that sort of would talk about this, right? You have gatekeepers that sort of keep people from getting to the next level. Um, and they are judging quality. That's the process. There are a bunch of critics right and what they're gonna do is they're gonna make sure that you can't get into the next level unless they sort of deem you as as credit worthy right like you imagine it as a as a credit system um and once you're credit worthy you get into the next level and everything is going to be that much more you know hunky-dory but here's the thing that next level it's just more work it's it's a lot more work and that's why they're worried about it they're thinking can this person actually withstand the demands of what we're expecting. So remember, any of these tasks, they're really just trying to figure out, is this person gonna be ready 
to keep going to the next level. And if you're not there, so what most people will do, okay, so either you're, you're a complete genius and you do really well in the first one, right, you get through and it's fine. You do, you write your test for, you study for two weeks, you write a test and you get, I don't know, whatever the high score is, 800, whatever that thing is, right? Um, so you get that, you're a complete genius, everybody wants you. That's not most people, like that is such a rare scenario, like don't even worry about that. What most people will do is they'll write their first one and they'll bomb and then you gotta have that sort of capability to get back up and get going. And so what they, what the whole career is about is like realizing you're gonna bomb and then you get back up and you do that. So you study another six more months, right? And you get back up and you do that and you go from your, you know, maybe your bomb sort of level is 600, right? Like that's, you're no good if you're, I don't know, stupid stuff, right? Like in your mind, you're thinking like, ah, I'm no good if I get a 600, you get a, you get a 590 and you think you're yourself is I'm no good. Well, then that's where you take the step back and you say, hey, what am I doing here, right? Like you have to reassess yourself. Is it that I'm no good or do I just have to tweak these different things? And if, it, if that's the case, you just tweak them, right? You take a couple more um, courses. Who cares if you take the course three times? That doesn't matter, right? It's costly, yes, I get it, but at least you actually get in with the score that you actually need to get, right? And that's the mentality the whole career is about is, okay, you failed the first time, all right, who cares? Let's move on, let's take that as information and move on and do something next. And that's the critical thing to think about, how you can leverage all of this to keep going forward, right? Don't think of yourself as some brilliant person that this thing matters, it doesn't. First of all, the test, the damn test does not matter for you as much as you think it does, it matters for everybody else. It matters for that sort of getting into the position that you need to get into. Yes, I got it. But it doesn't define you as a person. And once you realize this, you just pick it up and you get going, right? You get that rejection. You think, okay, let's get going. Pitter patter, let's get at her. And that's the important thing. Just keep going. One more day, one more step. Every, every single day. And don't forget that failure that you're going to experience is not you, right? You just have to take a step back and get going and, and pick yourself up and take one more step every single day. And then you actually do get there. It does work that way. Unless you're that lone genius, right? That gets the 800 on their GMAT. All right. Hopefully this helps you out. Take care. Good luck with all your prep work. All right.